All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Mr. Kester again. Today we're having another class. We'll be talking about predators, parasites, and diseases of snails. And we'll also look briefly at the marketing of snails, how you market your snails. So, yeah, uh, it's going to be a brief class. It's not going to be as long as the others. Of course, uh, this is our very last class for this training series. So, um, the snails have loads of predators and parasites. It's diseases that we don't have much knowledge about the type of diseases that affect snails. But predators and parasites, there are many that affect snails. That is why your snail environment must be secured. It must be secured from predators and parasites. And during the course of this training, we've talked in bits about how to ward off predators and parasites. So uh, most of the things I'm going to be talking about here today are things you may have heard in passing in some of the other early videos we have had. So, uh, oh, sorry, early training we have had. So uh, we we'll start with the predators. What is a predator? A predator is an organism that destroys another organism. And the organism that is being destroyed is called the prey. Now snails are slow moving animals and they are almost harmless. Their organ of offense, I do not understand as such yet, but I know the organ of defense for snails is retrieving into the shell. Now, in order for the snails to secure themselves or defend themselves, they retrieve into the shell and remain in that condition. And this exposes them to predators like ants, creeping things. Now, I said in one of our previous videos that the greatest predator to snails is man, that is thieves or theft on the farm when your farm manager happens to be the one selling your snails he becomes a predator to snails or the farm attendants are stealing your snails they become predators to snails because the predator is anything that will destroy the snails and not just the snails your farm so one has to be very careful who he or she employs to manage a snail farm Remember, the snails are noiseless animals. They don't make noise. They don't smell. So, someone can easily pack as many snails as possible, even while you are on the farm, if you're not close by. So, you need to ensure that whoever you give your snail farm to handle is a trustworthy person. And records are adequately kept on the farm. Otherwise, you'll be losing a lot of your products. So today we'll be talking about some of the predators. So first of all, we'll talk about the predation of man. So you must ensure that in order to take care of the issue of man stealing your snails, you must have good recording system on the farm. Because from the day the snails arrive, you know how many snails that were there. The farm manager will attest to it so that you are all on the same page. But adventure you come around and figure out uh, or find out that the snails have reduced greatly then someone has to take responsibility they need to show you the snails the dead if they of course quickly they would want to tell you the snails died if they died they should show you the dead snails with the shells and the dead body inside the shell before they can do away with the snail if you are not readily available to look at these things, then you can appoint a farm supervisor. Of course, you still have to be careful if your supervisor don't connive with the management or the team on ground to do away with your snails. But the ideal thing to do is if snails are missing or dying, then they should be able to account for the dead snails, not just the shells, but the dead body inside, and put record on that before they do away with the snails so that way you know that the snails actually died and they didn't sell them off so that's how you curb the issue or the menace of man in terms of predators 
Then other predators are ants. The soldier ant is one of the most deadly predators to snails. They attack and kill snails in mass. If snails, uh, if ants invade your farm, it can be very devastating. So that is why we talked about the water trench around your snail pen. Ensure that a very good casted floor is done and the pens constructed on top of the casted floor or on top of the concrete a German floor. Then you have the barrier of the water trench around the building. So any crawling insects or ants that will want to come from the external part of the building into the building to attack your snails must first go through that water barrier. And that water must contain engine oil or chemical, a disinfectant or a pest control chemical that must be poured inside that water. So any ants that falls into it, they, it dies inside that water. So that is how you take care of crawling insects and ants. Now, some of the predators that crawl on the ground that attack snails are soldier ants, termites, millipedes, centipedes, uh, toads, frogs, lizards, these are all predators to snails. Now, it is because of predators like frogs, toads, lizards, cockroaches that we have the wire mesh on top of the pens. Now, when you have the wire mesh on the concrete uh, pens, the cover lid, it takes care of the issue of reptiles, frogs, toads, and cockroaches that will fly or jump across the water barrier to attack the snails. Reptiles feed on the eggs and the young snails. Snails of 2-3 months old, reptiles can crack them up and feed on the internal organ. So you want to keep away reptiles, lizards, cockroaches, uh, of course cockroaches is not a reptile, um, um monitor lizards and all of the rest out of your snow pens so these are some of the predators that attack snails and the funny thing is when you have a snail farm you wouldn't know who invited these guys because they will definitely come once you have a snail farm somewhere lizards that you were not seeing around your farm will all suddenly come around your farm cockroaches will suddenly be uh, appearing on your farm uh, frogs, toads, centipedes, millipedes, you don't even know how they get there, but they will come without invitation. So you need to be prepared for these predators. Then parasites. One of the deadliest parasites to fly, uh, sorry, to snails is fly. Flies are very deadly to snails, especially the green bottle fly, Aluadiella flaviconis. It is a very deadly fly. What this fly does is, once it gets access to the snail, it will lay its eggs on the mouth of the snail. That is, the waste of the fly comes as eggs. Now, these eggs will stick to the mouth or the foot of the snails and will hatch into cream-colored worms. Now, these cream-colored worms will begin to feast on the edible part of the snail. And they will bruise the snail, cause linings on the mouth of the snail. Sometimes they are very tiny and microscopic, so you may almost not see them until they've done a reasonable amount of damage. So they'll bruise the snail, reduce the snail to a potty substance. It will begin to start smelling before you even discover it. And they will metamorphose from this lava stage, which is the cream-colored worms, into the pupa. And to the adult stage and they fly away from the snails now by the time they fly away the snail has become an empty shell so sometimes you go into your snail farm or your snail pen you discover empty shells two things result to this one is cannibalism by the snails it can suck out the other the snail out of the shell eat it or it's as a result of Aluadiella flaviconis, the green bottle fly. They continue feasting and feasting and metamorphose 
into the different phases of the development of the fly and by the time they fly away they reduce your snail to an empty shell so that is why we have the mosquito nets or they call the plastic nets on the cover lid before the wire mesh so this will take care of the issue of flies and parasites coming into the farm or the pen now when you open the pens to attend to the snails ensure that before you close the pens there are no flies inside the pens close the pens before you close the pen sorry inspect the pens carefully and ensure there are no flies before you cover the pens because if you close the pens with the flies inside there they will create a real considerable amount of damage before you know it so flies are parasites that affect snails and must be dealt with so this is why you must not expose your farm to just anybody and dead snails once discovered must be taken very far away from the farm so that they don't attract these flies coming to the farm because they always come around dead things so once you discover a dead snail in the farm ensure that you take the snail either bury it under the ground or throw it somewhere very far away but also the shell of the snail is useful excuse me the shell of the snail is useful you can get the snail gather the dead snails put them in a bag or in a bowl in a very distant place allow them to decay properly now when they have decayed properly get water to wash off the dead body inside that is the the the, the mass inside the, the snail wash it off after you wash it off then boil hot water and soak the shells in the hot water in order to sterilize the shells. Soak them in the hot water for a period of time, then dry them on the sun. When they have gotten very dry, then you can grind it and give it back to the snails. So that way you will not create infection for the snails. And also you have been able to give them good amount of calcium. You mix it, the ground snail shell, you mix it with their feed and give to them. That is if you feel the need to increase the calcium intake of the snails. So the snail shell is also very important. Remember, take away every dead snail very far away from the farm. Do not allow your feed to decay inside the pens these are the things that result to disease conditions in a snail farm ordinarily snails do not suffer from much disease from literatures the two common diseases that are known to snail are a bacterial infection caused by pseudomonas bacterium which is as a result of unhygienic environments or conditions within the pen you allow your feed to decay you allow anything just you, you over water your pens the water mixes with the leftover feed and the whole place becomes mushy and before you know bacteria begins to develop and fungi begin to grow on your snow pan then also apart from the bacteria pseudomonas bacterium we also have the case of uh, fungus fusarium which is actually a fungi that grows on leftover feed and affects the snails so you must ensure that leftover feed is taken care of take it away from the pens ensure that the pen is free of any form of disease causing organism or parasites or predators so once this is done your snails will not die as much as they would if this is not taken care of mortality is a natural occurrence in snails so snails will definitely die but not in mass because they are very strong and hardy animals but when the environmental conditions are not adequately managed then mortality will be on the increase in your snail pen so the two known diseases to snails are bacterial infection and fungal infection 
A bacterial infection is caused by Pseudomonas bacterium, while the fungal infection is caused by Fungus procerum. So these two conditions are as a result of poor hygienic conditions in the snow farm. So you must maintain good hygiene on the snow farm. So that's it about the parasites, predators, sorry, the predators, parasites, and diseases of snows. So we talked about the predators, one being man, others being crawling insects, parasites, uh, sorry, insects like ants, millipedes, centipedes, and all of them. We've listed all of them. Of course, you'll get details of them on the book. Then um, the parasites, we talk mainly about the fly, the uh, Aluadiella flaviconis, which is the green bottle fly that runs around decayed substances even feces once uh, you drop your waste the feces you see that green bottle fly is all over it so that fly is dangerous to snails then we've also talked about the diseases and uh, we talked about the pseudomonas bacterium and also the fungus procerum then we'll look out for marketing this is the very last topic we we'll dwell on marketing how do you market your snails how do you get market for your snails snails are very high in demand uh, in fact the demand for snails cannot be met because uh, the animal is of a high value to both man and uh, the cosmetic and pharmaceutical industry now the slime of the snail is on the rise the demand for the slime both nationally and internationally so uh on the international phase as well so the snail is very very valued in all works of human uh, uh life so the demand for snail is huge the places or the outlets that you can sell snails to uh you can have contracts with companies to supply companies buy snails and extract the slime from the snails and they also buy and export to European countries, to African restaurants in the US and in Europe, in the UK. These snails are highly prized. So people like that, they get snails in a very large quantity and they export the snail. So if you are fortunate to meet with people like that, the, thing, the challenge you will have is you would not be able to meet up their demand. Then there are also hotels that take in snails. Of course, if you are a fan of visiting hotels and uh, restaurants, you will know that snails are highly prized. Uh, the same portion of snail uh, compared to goat or uh, cow meat, the snail is always more expensive. Beef meat, uh, sorry to say. The snail is always more expensive compared to beef, pork, mutton, chivon, or uh, chicken so uh, that's why you notice that snails are highly priced then you can also sell to retailers in wholesale price they come and they buy in large quantities and retail them gradually you can also sell to the market now that is the worst place to go to if you go to where uh, you have a snail market where the aggregation of people selling snails if you tell them you have snails to sell that's the worst mistake you would make because they will come in mass to buy your snails. They can even buy as much as 100,000 pieces of snails a day because they buy them in large quantity and keep them in their homes and sell gradually to the final consumer. So if you have lots of snails and you're struggling to sell them, go to the market, to a snail market and tell the people selling snails that you have snails to sell. And of course, you won't be able to meet up with their demand. And also, you can take your market to the internet. Once you advertise your snail, snail is not something you advertise and you wouldn't get markets for. So, like for us, we have loads of people calling for quantities we cannot even meet up the demand for. So, sometimes we go back to the farms we've set up when they have snails readily available for sale. And they call us that they have snails for sale. Then if we have such large demands, we will always link them to the market so there's a huge market for snail for the snail meat and also for the slime which is gaining uh, uh gaining widespread um, recognition 
currently because a lot of people use the slime for different purposes and it's very very expensive so uh the shell of the snail is also used for livestock feed the empty shell of the snail like i said you boil hot water you you soak it in the hot water and dry it then grind it it's a good source of calcium for livestock feed uh, the snail shell from literature i understand to contain 98 percent calcium carbonate so it is one of the best sources of calcium you can have out there it's richer than limestone richer than bone meal and periwinkle shell so the snail shell is highly valued as a calcium supplement in livestock feed so these are some of the things uh, products that are gotten from the snail and the outlets you can sell the snails to companies uh research institutes hotels restaurants fast food joints eateries and so on you can always have contact with them and they will buy your snails from you and also you can take your market online on the internet if you have snails to sell people will come rushing so snail is not something that you'll be afraid of going into unlike poultry broiler production you are afraid of production because it is easy to produce or marketing it it is not so easy as people make it seem i'm into broiler and poultry farming so i can tell you that so the first thing you must do if you're going into livestock production is to source for the market to ensure that you have a uh, market for your products but with snails i can tell you 100 percent you don't need to worry about that the market is too big to be satisfied so there is always market for your snails so that is where we'll call it a day with our, our training so far i believe we've touched on most of the key ingredients in terms of production so i hope we have all had a wonderful time uh with this training session so far and i pray that um you'll be able to go ahead now to set up your snow farm and also correct uh, yourself from the mistakes that uh, you may have done one way or the other in the course of your snow farming journey and also we have some feasibility studies on the book and also record keeping is on the book so we'll send you that of course it's part of the training material i promise that will be sent at the end of the lectures so now that we've come to the end of the lectures i would send you the soft copy of the uh, book our practical handbook on snow so thank you god bless you it's been a wonderful time with you guys and i appreciate every one of you in this group thank you god bless you and bye-bye